Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for leaving all the comments below and the likes. Subscribing, I appreciate it. Keep it coming. Today, I'm bringing you the Axis Virus TI-2. You guys have requested it, I promised it. Here it is without any further delay. Let's jump into it. of the control panel on the Axis Virus TI-2. Uh, starting here on the left side, we have our arpeggiator. We also have our effects section, complete with three band EQ. Uh, and we have a distortion character, chorus, phaser, and others. Others would include like comb filters, uh, crossover filters, some pretty cool stuff. Back up top here, we have our matrix. So what we would do is hit modulation, it'll show us slot one of six. And then we can go ahead and choose our destinations. And that will give us one destination per slot, but that destination can have three separate sources. So for example, uh, the modulation wheel here currently is going to LFO three, and whatever LFO three is assigned to, the modulation wheel will increase uh, that value. So, for example, if LFO3 was controlling the filter cutoff uh, speed, okay, and depth, if we turn the modulation wheel up, it's going to correspondingly increase the speed and the depth of LFO3. So, again, we have six slots, so we could have modulation wheel, we could have uh, aftertouch, um, we could have, you know, say the LFO affecting the amplifier envelope. Uh, intensity or decay or sustain, uh, even release. So some notes you could have a really quick release while the LFO is going down, and then while LFO is going up, it's increasing the release time of the notes, so you can get a kind of much more dynamic feel. Pretty interesting, um, very useful, but you do have to keep in mind your DSP resources, because um, sometimes you can build absolutely complex patches, uh, but you're not going to get you know, the whole 16 multi-part uh, functionality with using a ton of modulations per patch. Um, now moving over, we do have our LFO1, LFO2, and LFO3. And as you can see here, the little white lettering um, basically dictates which each LFO will cover. So for example, LFO1, you could do pulse width um, of say a square wave. You could do oscillator one pitch, oscillator two against third pitch, um, filter gain, and an assign. So it can also be assigned to whatever you want. LFO two, you'll have cutoff one, cutoff two, shape, FM amount, pan, and again, a freely assignable slot. And then LFO three, again, is just a freely assignable LFO. And per each of these, when the lights are on, then you can change the corresponding shape of the wave. So LFO1 could be a square, LFO2 could be a saw wave or a ramp, LFO3 could just be a triangle or say wave. Um, the wave feature gives you, I believe it's 65 of the waves that are included in the actual wave table. Um, so that's pretty useful. You can get some pretty wild um, LFO shapes just out of the wave function. And to change the actual wave, uh, what you would do is go to edit envelope, excuse me, edit envelope, and then it'll give you a whole choice down here. Uh, moving on now, we can, oh, sorry, we can also make the LFOs, say LFO one, two, or three, we could put it into envelope mode, thereby giving you extra envelopes. Um, now we have our oscillator section. The oscillators on the Virus TI-2 are fantastic. They are a bit darker than the Prophet 12. They do have a bit more uh, bottom end. Uh, the cool thing though is that, again, like say with the Moog, you can change from a sine wave on oscillator one and continuously variable all the way up to a square tooth wave, square tooth, a square wave. So you have way, or you have sine uh, phasing into a sawtooth and then the sawtooth blending into a full-on square wave. Now when it's in square wave mode, this knob here 
which says wave select slash pulse width. Uh, in square mode, this will give you the changing of the pulse width. So for example, so that gives us our, our changing of the phase. Now we do have our semitone selector. Now note that the pulse width knob, the wave select knob, doesn't have any effect with when it is a uh, sawtooth wave. So I find that a little bit disappointing, but nonetheless, um, it's it's fine with me. Um, over here now we have our detune two from three. So when we hear both oscillators. So that gives us our detuning ability to get that really lush kind of uh, chorusy phasing effect. Now we select our oscillators by hitting the select knob, uh, the select button. So that'll give us access to oscillator one, two, and three. Now three, you actually do have to turn on. So what you do is select oscillator three, you'd hit the edit button, and you just go ahead and turn it on. Now by turning it on, it gives you saw, uh, saw, pulse, sine, triangle, wave three, four, five, six, all the way to wave 64. The volume of oscillator three um, is gonna be this knob here. So right there, I'm just cycling through all the available waves. Um, but an interesting note was that it does say oscillator three volume below the sub oscillator volume knob. Now, I, we're hearing the sub oscillator right there. Now to turn, say oscillator three volume up, shift, it's not doing it. it, just says sub oscillator volume. So that's strange. Anyway, I hardly ever use the third oscillator. I mostly just use the sub octave oscillator. Okay, so now we're just back to default, which is two slightly detuned saw waves. Okay, moving on. Now we do have our FM amount knob. This makes it super easy to do FM sounds. It can get crazy with two sawtooths. Um, the one interesting thing to note is that you may have heard when I was turning this FM knob or even the semitone knob that it kind of glides to these certain intervals that it thinks you would want. Now you can turn that feature on and off so it's a smooth gliding parameter, but if you listen, check this out. <laughs> So really it just makes it easier to hit, say, if you're gonna tune your oscillators to octaves or fifths, it has a tendency to float kind of to those certain um, values. Uh, however, you can overshoot it sometimes, and, and I do find it a little tricky at times to really dial in the specific value that I'm looking for. Um, however, with that said, uh, like I said, you could always turn it off. Uh, we do have our mono selector button. <laughs> makes it super easy to go into mono mode, which is nice. Uh, and we do have our sync knob. Now when you select sync and you select oscillator two, now the semitone becomes your sync effect. Now I will say I love the sound of the sync, but it comes not even close to the sync of say the Electron Analog 4 or the Sub Fatty by Moog. Um, there are multiple different versions of FM mode that you can choose from. 
So for example, if I turn this say to 100% and shift, and now I turn the FM knob, it gives me position triangle, triangle, wave, noise, input left, input left right, and input right as my FM sources. Most of the time I like to keep it kind of on triangle. Um, and if you do put it on wave, it's going to whatever wave shape of oscillator one will be like out of you know the one out of 64 waves whatever shape you choose that becomes a modulator for the fm which is kind of cool but it's you know you got to be careful because you get into some really really difficult uh sounds to control so moving on what i do is i just go to rom v and go select any number in the V category, and that gives you an initialized patch, which is essentially is the two sawtooths detuned. Now, over in this section, we have our balance from oscillator one. I'll put oscillator two an octave above so you can hear it. So that's your balance knob for the volume and blending. Um, like I said earlier, here's your sub octave. Very nice. Now down here is oscillator volume. And we have our noise volume. Now if you do hold shift and turn up noise volume, it turns into an oscillator ring modulator. So that's pretty cool. And you can get some really, really vintage fat sounding uh, saw waves and even square waves. Um, by incorporating that ring modulator.